Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is The Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Day Sports College Football. We're into episode number 34 of our series. We've got a 7-3 record. Last two games of the season, they're both home games. They're both against teams with bad records. But even though we're over 10 minutes into this game against UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, they're only, what was it, 2-9? and nine? Yeah, 2-9. and nine. We've got a massive advantage, yet we only lead 3 nothing. Here's what's happened in the beginning parts of, of the game. Uh, first off, we opened on defense, and... UNLV barely got beyond the line of scrimmage on all of their first plays, but then they got one lucky play where the defender went down, and this looks like this could be a score. Will he outrace that linebacker who's coming on fast, that strong safety who's coming up a little bit faster but further behind? He does. Completely unguarded and gets in for the touchdown. This will put us at 9 and hopefully 10. And it does. 10-0. Uh, prior to that, so one lucky play moved the ball a little bit uh, where the defender got knocked down without any sort of call. And so he's able to get some separation, get some space. And then that backed us up into our own end when we then took the, the punt return. And then we easily moved the ball, but then fumbled. Turned it over, giving UNLV great field position. And then we just backed them up, backed them up, backed them up. They kicked a field goal and missed. And then we started to move the ball immediately, fumbled again. Ended up also taking an offensive penalty, backing us up. Ended up having to punt away, and then immediately backed them up, forced to punt, got ourselves in good field position, and then really started moving the ball quickly and easily. Got down into the red zone, and then made a mistake as we are off to the races here and it looks like there's a chance though he's a little slow these guys are definitely catching up to him that corner is coming real fast that linebacker has slowly been gaining on him for ages and it looks like he's going to catch him around the 15 yard line bring him down to the 14 that's 68 yards for Pittman on that one that is two long long passing plays right now where is a perfect five of five with over 150 yards in this game as we're looking to open the floodgates. Well, anyway, we get all the way down to the red zone and then make a bad decision on first down where there was definitely some room to run, but we cut back in, end up with a short game. And then on second down, we go for the run up the middle, and that time it was well covered. Third down, room to the outside, on a sweep, Three blockers. Looks like it's going to be a touchdown. And then we decide to cut back inside towards traffic without any pressure. Get tackled short of the first down. Have to settle for the field goal. We can see since that point, we've quickly turned things up. Though well, unfortunately, we just settled for a field goal again. But it's 13-0. Where has been perfect so far. We've moved the ball at will. Other than some minor mistakes. A couple penalties have pulled back big gains. Two fumbles in the game. One lost. But a very quick three and out here by UNLV. Short punt. It's going to give us ball right here at midfield. This will probably be the last drive of the game we watch. We should be cruising towards 8-3 right now, and a UNLV penalty there offside gives us an easy one here. Looks like that's enough for the first down. Kirkwood, five yards. 
on the counter left. We're already beyond the 40. The option left there, pitch perfectly timed, and you can see just how well uh, Bentley and Kirkwood both have, have done on beating tackles. Uh, over and over again, they find more yardage after contact. That time only one yard, but this will be enough for the first. Chains are moved. Collins, the fullback with the carry that time, on the draw play, three yards. It was enough to fool them just a little bit. This time Bentley, though, only a short gain. This, that's really, the I think, the first time uh, we've had a, a zero net yard gain uh, on a carry. And back-to-back, -back, actually, as Bentley again goes short. Uh, we've given up one sack. Beyond that, it's all been forward, forward momentum, other than a couple penalties. Uh, again, we end up settling for a field goal, this time 35 yards, as we come up just short of the first. There on third and long, we gained eight, settle for that field goal, and we nail it. So that's three field goals already. They're definitely in a bend, don't break kind of situation as we're struggling in the red zone a little bit uh, to put it in. The one score we've had was well outside of the red zone. Three trips to the red zone, three field goals that we've ended up settling for. Offensively, though, they've had one large gain on a reception and that was i think the very very first play when we went live they gained about 30 yards on that one that's been it they've only had a couple first downs uh, so far in this game as we have third and five here quarterback keeper it looked like it was oh it was a quarterback keeper all the way sprint right uh, no gain on that one he get, just gets back to the line of scrimmage and this punt was blocked by Tovar. Tovar has blocked it, and we're going to have first down in the red zone. First and 10 from the 16. That was a dangerous pass that time, but it does get in there, but Poland is unable to make the catch. He drops it. This time, we got a draw for the quarterback. No, that is a broken play. That was supposed to be off tackle right. So some sort of miscommunication on that one. The quarterback ends up with the ball in his hands, loses a little bit, and then third and long, and we go for the run play. And now four successive red zone trips result in field goals. And Clark is four for four, at least on the day, so he's consistently making them. None of them have been terribly long field goals, but... Real unfortunate that we have not been able to put this game away. Regardless of that, we are definitely in absolute control of this game and look like we could have a huge score. Giant lob pass over the middle to the running back on this one actually goes pretty well. He makes the catch and they pick up seven yards on it. That was one of their biggest gains of the game. The quarterback is just 4 of 13 right now for them. As they go to third and two on this one, can we shut them down with another three and out? This is the best couple plays they've had in a while, but I think he came up short. Yeah, short gain, just getting beyond the line of scrimmage, and there's another fourth down. Another short punt, no return this time, 38 yards, and it's going to be first and 10 from our own 40. A score here would... Just about seal the deal. There's a lot of game left to play, but quick first down. He's got a little room to run, but there's one cornerback who is ridiculously fast. And it seems to be Pittman over and over again on those long gains. He's the one finding the space, finding the separation, getting the yards after the catch. UNLV's linebacker injured on the play. Unfortunate for them. Nice cut back there. Good enough for the first down. Traffic everywhere, surrounded by white and red jerseys. But Bentley gains 11, gets the first down. This one, quick handoff. Looks like he had the fullback in a potential pitch situation, but Kirkwood runs straight through the line, gets into the second tier before he's tackled. Five yards on that gain. And again, here we are, short. Third and three now. Can we get a first down? We're inside the red zone. This one's not going to get caught. Oh, it is. It is caught. Oh, my goodness. To the tight end. Went to the big man. Wilkins makes catch. Six yards. Moved the chains. 
First and 11. A fullback handoff. Collins, three yards. He never gets more than two or three yards on a carry. A little bit questionable call there. Keep pushing to the outside. Keep pushing to the outside. There you go. There you go. Touchdown. Boy, I, he could have used the sideline and easily. He could have walked in, but instead he, he keeps threading the needle, staying just off the edge. But Bentley there, eight-yard carry. And finally, we convert in the red zone with a touchdown. We've been perfect scoring-wise in the red zone, but way too many field goals, four. And finally, on the fifth chance, we carry it into the end zone, and it's 26 nothing. Let's go ahead and skip to the end of the game. Final score, 46-3. They got one field goal in the third quarter. No touchdowns on the day. Where? 10 of 13. I pretty much had the rest of the day off from the looks of things. Yeah, Pittman didn't have any additional catches, but Bentley had a lot more touches, 36 in the end, but only 123 yards, meaning he actually did slow down a bit uh, on his production there in the second half. In terms of points, we had fewer in the second half. It was, uh, I don't think we had any more in the second quarter. And then there were still four or five minutes to play. We didn't get a lot of first downs the rest of the way. So apparently we became predictable in the run game after a while, and they just focused on that and stepped up their play. 440 yards compared to 188. Passing yards, huge advantage. Completions and attempts didn't end up looking so good. I think where it came out of the game was that because of the lead. Yeah, West came into the game two of seven. I sure hope that that wasn't because of an injury and that was just an AI decision after the CPU finish uh, to switch that up. Yards per pass, though, right about 14. Uh, rushing yards, clear advantage on that one, but still only three yards per carry by the end of the game, so that backed off a lot from where it was. Uh, we did have another turnover and two more fumbles uh, by the end of the game. We did get one from them. Kirkwood, 10 carries, 39 yards, three touchdowns for Bentley by the end of the game. Wow. Pittman, two yards shy of 100. Lily got up to three catches in 88 as well, plus the, the long touchdown was his. Oh, I thought it was Pittman on all of those. Okay, so Lily had one. The last two kicks were Randall, got both. Defensive side, Holcomb, 11 tackles, one for a loss, one sack. Fumble recovery and a pass deflection. That is defensive player of the week quality performance that he could potentially have. Uh, Alvarez, seven tackles, two for loss, plus the forced fumble. Meyer also having a good day. Cisco having a good day. Corners, not too much. We had four pass deflections, but no interceptions. Uh, Bentley. Had a fumble recovery, but that was picking up his own. Pittman as well. Those were the two fumbles we didn't lose. And penalties, not too bad. Just 30 yards total. Pancakes, not that great, but only two sacks allowed. Considering we had one of those on our very first drive. Going with just one the rest of the way is decent. They had a lot of penalties, but not a lot of yardage. Just one longer one. Well, no. Three longer ones. Uh, only three sacks allowed, surprisingly, so our line didn't get a whole lot of penetration in there. Uh, but we certainly shut them down, and that put us to eight and three. Already the best record we've had in any season. Let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the week. We'll see this last week we had a massive, massive turnover in terms of recruiting. So we'll see uh, what can be done here now. Uh, for one thing, we did finally get our very first commitment. And let's see, week 14. 
So Crawford has signed up with us. That's a guard, but we also just lost the other guard that we needed. And then we lost uh, defensive tackle. And we lost a wide receiver and linebacker, but those were already gone. So two players to replace. We got one signed on. Pretty good rank, 549. Take that. Higgins, about average. Uh, Thurston, tight end. It looks like we're going to lose him. There's one who just signed on, Walter Crawford. Uh, average potential, so not great on that front, but at least we got him. Uh, it looks like the quarterback might be a loss as well. Training report could be better. Just one game left to play here in the regular season, and either way, we are absolutely heading to a bowl game with this nice 8-3 and three record. We're just outside the top 25 rankings, which is amazing, uh, considering just the few years that we've had this program and how we're still essentially a half-star coach and have a long, long ways to go. We're finding a way. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our guys first. Well, hold on. Let me start with replacing the two that are definitely lost. And that's going to be a guard. Already getting pretty far down the list. I mean, we're already out of the top 700 now, out of the top 750. Okay, and what was the other one we lost? Defensive tackle. Be nice when we get good enough at recruiting to actually start competing for guys and not just pick it up scraps. Okay, there's the two we lost. Now let's go ahead and go back in to our targets and go with the guys we're recruiting. Wisconsin in for Carlisle, not a chance. So that's a quarterback. Oh my goodness. And a tight end. Everybody's after him all of a sudden. So quarterback, tight end, let's go with those. We can come back. Okay, quarterback taken care of, now tight end. Already down to three-star territory and 
falling well outside of the decent rankings, outside of 1,000 now. Whole three scouting points left. Ah, shoot. Okay, we need a corner. That's the new guys. Yeah, that's new guys, so we need one more cornerback. Bit too much on the turnover this time, and last time. These last two weeks have been really hurtful on our recruiting class. Points left to go after, so I have to settle for that. At least we have one spot filled this week. I'll take that, I suppose. All right, so let's go ahead and quick sim this week. Last game of the regular season, but we definitely have a bowl game to come. This should be a win. Should. And it's nice to say that, but we don't. <laughs> we just lost to East Carolina. Seriously? We just lost to East Carolina at 31-14 at home. Oh my goodness, Ware had a terrible day. Jeez. Interception, pick six, pick six. So that was all on where? Nine for 23 on third down. We had more yards. We definitely had more passing yards. We did not move the ball on the ground at all. Just 36 rushing yards on 52 attempts. So we had to do it through the air. But then through the air, we threw it away three times. Four times. Four. Four interceptions. Wow. So. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. That was ugly. All those sacks. And we couldn't force any turnovers in that game. We had a negative four. On turnovers and we just lost to a really bad team so that did go as planned uh, we dropped to eight and four <laughs> that couldn't have been any uglier than it was conference awards for week 14 Tovar uh, took defensive player of the week week 15 recruiting summary we do pick up a tackle a new quarterback that we just went after and a defensive tackle so that is huge for us as we pick up three more players that we needed. The list is getting a little bit shorter. We're a third of the way there, but we do lose some of the guys we were after. We lost the other tackle. And then we lost a guard, the new one we just went after. 
And then we lost tight end. And we are really getting down to thin pickings for the tight end. And I'm wondering if maybe it's time to abandon the recruitment of a tight end for this season and look to fill in the spot next season instead. Really good potential for the quarterback, that's good. Really good potential on that defensive tackle. Yeah, we lost just. So, unfortunate end to the season as we dropped to 8-4. and four. Yeah, but the bowl game obviously matters a whole lot more. And still, that's two wins better than any season that we've had thus far, and it ends very poorly. And let, uh, let's start with the replacements we need. The tight end, I'm, I'm gonna come back to that one. Let me do the tackle and the guard. There you go. Yes, please. And a guard. 722 is not a great rank, but could be a lot worse than that. You know, like 993. Not great, but could be a lot worse than that. And it's definitely a lot worse than Stackhouse. So instead of tight end, let's see who the best player left is for this last scholarship. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> Recruited by, it doesn't say none. That's recruited by none. And we're looking at recruit rank 405. It's only a three star, but 405. Defensive end? Sure. Let's do it. It would be nice if Allen wasn't being recruited, but I, I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> If he's not, maybe we'll figure out. Let, let's check that scatter report again. Yeah, see, it's not showing up as anything. There's no way he's not being recruited, right? But we have points. So we might as well spend some points and just see. I don't have a scholarship to offer just yet, but let, let's see what happens with this guy. Meanwhile, let's take a look at our targets. Nice thing about having four guys recruited finally, and only 12 scholarships to offer, this list just gets a little bit shorter, shook. Linebacker. Place a linebacker. Uh, 
most of those guys look like we'll be able to get them. These are the new guys. Okay, so we need a linebacker. There you go, that's not bad. Three points, woo! There's still a couple weeks till the end of the regular season. Should see this number of recruits go up. Now, let's take a look at the standings before we move on. So we are third place in the West, one game behind San Diego State. Boise State, number 16 in the nation, 10 and 2. One of those losses was to us. Yeah. And we're better than Colorado State at this point by a half game. So that puts us in fourth place in the entire conference. I like that. I like that. That's good. Let's go ahead and get through the week. Next week, maybe we'll take a look at the stats for the team so far this season, overall. All right, recruiting a summary. Holy cow, there you go. We've got six, seven more guys signed up. That leaves us with, what, one left? And it's Edward Roberts who left us the quarterback. Oh, there you go. Allen was locked on to Stanford. He signed up with them. So quarterback is the only position left. Got everybody else signed up. That's good. Look at that. They're all inside the top 1,000. A couple of them only just. But a lot of decent recruits in there. It's all three-star guys. The entire recruiting class is three star guys, but still, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's that is good. Decent training that week as well. Some progress with the players. And just one position left to recruit it is quarterback let's see what is the quality like oh ouch no quality no quality left here so let's turn this into a let's look at all and get the best player free safety so much better than everybody else All right, that's it for that part. Now, take a look at a few other things. Da, 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 da. There we go, season recaps. So these last few years, we were six and six regular season and then won our bowl games to go seven and six. So at eight and four, win or lose off bowl game, this will already be the best season we've had. But for it to be two games, better than the best season we've had overall, we do need to go on to win our bowl game. Excuse me. School records, as of right now, it's 2022 right now, by the way, so where the 330 yards in this last game that we just lost with the four interceptions. Yeah, that was the most, <laughs> that 
That was the most passing yards we've ever had in a game by a quarterback. And essentially the worst performance we've ever had in a game by a quarterback. Strange day. Very strange day. Uh, rushing touchdowns, Bentley. Three against Fresno State in week seven. And Pancakes, Keenan against Fresno State had 11. Wire's passer rating against UNLV was the best we've ever had with a 245. That was a nice one. Okay, how about career records? I don't know if this is going to show up with this year's just yet. Why not? There's nothing up here. No. This is still last year's stuff, so... Uh, we're going to have to look at the beginning of the season to get into that department. But for current, go some quick team stats. We're getting 28 points per game, giving up 17. Putting up 360 yards of offense, giving up 330. We've got an advantage of over 40 yards per game over our opponents. We're 37th in the nation in rushing, 36th in scoring, 25th in defense, defensive scoring. Ware has 2,500 yards and 18 touchdowns on the season. Bentley has 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns on the season. And Poland, 700 yards receiving with six touchdowns. Last one, real quick, that we'll look at here. Where? A 141 rating. 18 and 7 is his regular season tally. Touchdown, interception, rushing. Kirkwood, far fewer carries this season as Bentley has taken over the starting job. Uh, though they have mixed the game started, you can see. 330 yards. Pittman. 47 catches, 666 yards. Bradley, also 47 catches. So you can see there's really four guys that are well clear of the others. Seaman, the fifth one, getting in there. Wilkins, the tight end, kind of leading the way in that category, but not very many catches for the tight ends this season at all. In terms of touchdowns, it's Poland and Pittman and Lilly. Drops. Ouch. Poland, 15 drops. Quite a few fumbles by the receiving core. Special teams. Mm, let's see. No punt return or kick return touchdowns this season. Zero. Defense leading the team in tackles is Tovar with 83 tackles for the season. Also, nine sacks. That is the best on team. Cisco had seven forced fumbles. No player with more than two. Pass deflections. Oof. Wyman, huge advantage there. Doubling bunner. Missed tackles. Oh, I'm mean also messing that one up. Pancakes. Keenan with 63. Almost double anybody else. Most sacks allowed, Teeter, and then Keenan. So he might have had the most pancakes, but he also made the most mistakes to give up sacks. And kicking. Perfect for extra points. 
19 of 24 for Clark, 7 of 9 for Randall. Melissa, 48 yards per punt. Free had 45. Oh, there you go. Penalties. Keenan had the most with six. So Keenan has some work to do. He might be getting a lot of pancakes, but he's giving up a lot of penalties and a lot of sacks. He's going to need to work on that. Alvarez, defensive end, picking up five of his own. Overall, though, that's, that's really not a bad total. All right, we've already taken care of the recruiting, right? Yes. Another week to send here. We are into conference championships here. It's Nevada and Boise State. Clemson taking on number six, Miami. Clemson won their game. We're into the bowls. We'll see how this went. So uh, we are going to the Desert Bowl against the Blue Raiders. Okay, we got Odin. That's good. Nice. It's a good player. It's a very good player. So not that we needed a free safety, but we got him. So. Uh, above average, so that's good. Another decent training report. Recruiting summary. Yeah, all those guys ended up going somewhere. Got our man in the end. That'll be a decent recruiting class. It's only 12 players, so it's not the biggest we've had. But it's all three-star guys. I don't know if it'll quite be as high as last season's. But our prestige should definitely move up this season. It's actually already moved up some since the start of the season. i surprised to see that change in the middle of the season. So let's go team schedule. Nah, it's not showing up yet. Okay, well anyway, the four Four teams that will fight for the national championship. Clemson, the one seed. Missouri, two. Ohio State, three. And Alabama, four. Even though Alabama is only 10 and two. But there's no team better than that. They are the first of the 10 and two teams. Louisville, Notre Dame, Oregon, Miami. All at 10 or 11 and two. Mississippi. Nebraska, Michigan State, Boise State, all in that two-loss category. And then you get to the three-loss teams, and there's a clear division uh, from, what, 13th on down through 22nd, all with three losses. And then you have the four-loss teams, and we fall into that category as one of the four-loss teams. So we're on par with the teams ranked 23rd. There's quite a list of eight and four teams, though. So... We're not going to play the game yet. It's going to be the end of the episode here. However, we'll take a look and figure out where we are. There it is. Middle Tennessee. 
Middle Tennessee, they have a negative. They're only 83rd in the nation in scoring. Their yardage is about a net zero, almost anyway. 2,000 yards for their top, oh, that's their passer. Their top rusher, just 590 and two touchdowns. Whew. Okay. I like our chances in this game. They are 6-6. Six and six. They do have a few players out. Oh, Keenan, probable. Lily, probable. Ham is out, though. That Ham's been gone for a long time. That's That has definitely hurt us. Yeah, I would definitely favor us in the game. That doesn't mean we'll win. That last game, I certainly would have favored us. We did not win. <laughs> but that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. And remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe. And tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.